let's start with a simple question. What is the sum of the first n positive integers? When confronted with a mathematical question like this, your first response should be to look at some specific values of n and see if you can find a pattern. In fact, one of the most overlooked skills in math is a willingness to experiment with numbers and play around a bit. After a little bit of computation, we would be able to come up with a chart like this. After staring at this for a little while, you might see that there's a simple formula that relates n to the sum of the first n positive integers. It's one thing to come up with a formula, but it's another thing to know that it's correct. We've only checked it for the first 10 positive integers. There are still infinitely many to go. We can make the chart bigger and feel more confident about the formula, but no matter how big of a chart we make, we will always have infinitely many more cases left to check. So we need a scheme for checking infinitely many formulas while only investing a finite amount of work. Clearly, this can't happen by checking individual formulas. We can use the principle of mathematical induction to accomplish this. Here's the formulation that we will be using in this class. The principle of mathematical induction. A statement about integers is true for all integers greater than or equal to 1 if it is true for the integer 1, and whenever it is true for all integers 1, 2, 3 up to k, then it is true for the integer k plus 1. For those who have a bit more mathematical experience, you might recognize this as the second principle of mathematical induction, or strong induction. For this class, we're not going to get bogged down in the details of the differences between the various forms of induction. To understand how this works, we will think about an infinite line of dominoes. We will label all the dominoes with positive integers, each one representing a formula we wanted to prove to be true. We will also imagine that knocking over a domino is like proving the statement to be true. Our goal is to be able to knock over all the dominoes. The first condition of mathematical induction is the claim that we're able to knock the first domino over. The second condition of mathematical induction is the claim that for any k, we can knock over the k plus first domino if we can knock over the first k dominoes. For example, we can knock over the first three dominoes, then we can also knock over the fourth. If we can knock over the first four dominoes, then we can knock over the fifth, and this works for any integer k. Intuitively, if both these conditions are met, we should be able to knock over the entire line. We will use this idea to prove the formula for the sum of the first n positive integers. To prove a statement using induction, we must prove that the statement satisfies the two conditions. The first condition is known as the base case, and is often just verifying a specific formula to be true. The second condition is known as the induction step. We will assume that the first k statements are true, and then try to prove that the k plus first statement is true. We will often only need to use the kth statement, but there are other situations in which we will need more than that. Base case. When n equals 1, the sum on the left is just a number 1. And if we plug in n equals 1 on the right, we get 1 times 2 over 2, which is just 1. And this proves the base case. For the induction step, the inductive hypothesis is that the formula holds for all integers from 1 to k. And we want to prove that the equation holds for k plus 1. Everything from here is just algebraic manipulation. First, we will rewrite the sum so that the kth term is explicit. Then we will use the inductive hypothesis and replace this part using this formula. We can pull off a k plus 1 over 2 from both terms to get the desired result. There are two more statements that we will prove in class. The first is the formula for the sum of the terms in a finite geometric sequence. And the second is just an observation that we will use in the next section. Thank you for watching this video. I'm currently dabbling with the idea of creating more videos like these for my classes. And I welcome constructive comments that might help me make better videos in the future.